What were you guys, dating or something? You know, maybe he didn't kill himself because he was gay. I'm here at Pelt with Kat and Heidi, the leading ladies of Bumblefuck USA. And I've got to say, it's probably the best lesbian romance I've seen since High Art. So we're talking back to the glory days of you know, 90s new queer cinema. Well done, congratulations. Thank you very much. I absolutely loved it. And if Pelt were a festival that were in the habit of handing out awards, and there happened to be a category for best title, I think you'd be a shoe in. <laughs> I was very, very disappointed to learn that there's no um, theatrical that it's going straight to DVD, and it's disappointing because you know here at the uh, in the underground, we have those huge film posters, and it would be great, wouldn't it, to see the commuters kind of doing a double take because they're like Bumble what? Right. Yeah. It so would. missed opportunity there, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those who aren't familiar with UrbanDictionary.com, uh, do you want to explain Bumblefuck? It means the middle of nowhere, basically like the the city where you don't want to be found dead. Yeah. Well, that, that's interesting that you say that because the, the opening of the film, uh, the Iowa landscape is beautiful. Yeah. Like, and because, you know, the character being a foreigner, that also uh, romanticizes it, I think, quite a bit. So there is, um, yeah, it's, it's quite ironic, I suppose, in that sense. I'm from, uh, well, I'm actually east of, of where they filmed the, the film. And, uh, we often call it that, we, you know, except we have a different sort of slang for it. It's We kind of have our own spin on BFE or Bumblefuck, but yeah, we call it BFE. But do, do you feel that then, as a, as a native, that it is just it's, middle of nowhere? Yeah, kind of, because, you know, I mean, it depends on what your career is or career choice. I mean, if you're an artist or an actor, you, you, really, you really sort of have to get out of the Quad Cities to, to pursue your career. Um, if you are an engineer or, you know, a farmer or, uh, you know, do livestock or, um, you know, a variety of, there's a, it's a big service sort of industry there too. So, you know, there's, there's that. So, so you're at the start of your career and yet you're still at home. Well, I moved to, Chi yeah, exactly. That's I funny. moved to Chicago at first six years and loved it. And, uh, but I'd like to live somewhere else. So I moved home and make some money and move somewhere else. Yeah. So the film is, is it's a really personal story. It's dedicated to is it the director, um, his cousin. Yes. Um, who, you know, tragically committed suicide after coming out of the closet. And, um, you know, so it's obviously very personal to him. But I'd be really interested to know how, how you got involved as co-writer, Kat, on this project. Um, well, I was uh, together with the director for a long time. Uh, we were together for 10 years and I also met uh, Matt, his cousin, um, so I knew him a little bit, not very well, but a little bit and um, uh, in the time that we were together Matt had, uh, did his first suicide attempt and then he woke up in the hospital and wrote a note because he couldn't write, uh, I'm a gay Republican and nobody of the family had known anything about him being gay so that was a part of his life that was completely hidden um, and uh, f for me that was very coming from Amsterdam it was very strange and very um, heftig I don't know the English word but just yeah uh, mind-blowing that uh, of course he that, that probably wasn't the only thing you, you you never know we can't ask anymore because he doesn't live anymore um, but it was a harsh way of coming out of the closet. And then uh, Aaron wanted to make a film in his hometown. Um, and we decided to gear it around Matt. Uh, and the story ended up being of my character, Alexa, going there to make a documentary um, after her good gay friend committed suicide to see what the gay community is like and how it's like to live in such a small American town as a gay person. So I imagine for him that when you were writing it together, it was uh, it was almost like having a dialogue with you, where he could kind of talk through and, and process what happened. Yeah. To a large extent, I, I, I mean, being together and co-writing, I, I was you said that, and I thought about um, the um, Lynn Ramsey and and her partner, they co-wrote. We need to talk about Kevin, mm -hmm. oh, and yeah? she was saying how their you know their marriage was on the brink 
several times. Um, yeah, it's not easy for a relationship to do that. And, well, yeah, the, uh, our relationship didn't survive. Uh, not only because of the film, but after the film we, uh, we separated eventually. Um, and was the film kind of, a, a, like you say, a big contributing factor though, to that, do you think? Yeah, because um, I, my, my character develops feelings for a woman, and it was not the first time that I had feelings for a woman, but during the filming I had, very clearly. So that was uh, confusing as well, because I was playing it, but also feeling it. Uh, and at the same time still being in a relationship with a man uh, who I love very much and who I have been with for 10 years. But uh, yeah, diff difficult times. So, so playing that as you're feeling it, um, if not for the first time, but you're getting kind of in touch with those feelings. Um, it, it was also quite therapeutic though as well, I'd imagine, in a, in a good way. In a good way, yeah. Uh, or, or maybe uh, when looking back, at that time I wasn't thinking about it that much, I was just in it and uh, we were also, we were working so many hours and uh, I was also doing the documentary, so we basically only met during, in, in the scenes. We didn't even see each other that much around it, but then again we were, we were filming long hours because it was just, uh, we didn't have all that much time and the crew came from the Netherlands, so we had to get it done. Uh, we did sneak away one day though and got lost <laughs> walking around and then it rained on us and <laughs> it was pretty fun. And then it, there was like a search crew out looking for us, you know, and we were like just hanging out in the rain. It was really fun. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Alexa, your character, she, she's quite comfortable um, being on the other side of the, of the camera and asking these really intensely personal questions and yet reveals very little of herself um, and, and Jennifer, uh, your character Heidi, I think is the only one who kind of sees to, you know, that smokescreen and that bullshit. And, and why do you think that is um, outside of the obvious kind of physical attraction? Um, well, I think Jennifer's character, I think she is an intuitive person and I think that she um, was attracted to Alexa and also kind of wanted, you know, if, if, in the beginning of the film, you know, she kind of helps her out and, and makes sure that she's safe because she, you know, partied too hard and stuff, you know, so Jennifer takes her home and makes sure that she's safe and, you know, and everything's okay. So I think, um, yeah, I think, I think Jennifer is, um, she's, she's a strong character. I think she's a strong woman, confident. Um, you know, knows what she wants, knows what she's after. And I think, I think that's kind of what attracts her to Jennifer. Or I think she, at first, is just curious about Jennifer and, and wants to, you know, at, at least establish some kind of friendship and, and, and that sort of thing. And then it kind of starts turning into more, so. And as it does turn into more, it's, it's like this increasingly non-verbal thing which I really responded to. And actually, you know, it's, it's why I said, why I mentioned high art. Mm -hmm. It was a similar scene. You know, there's that great scene where they're in the, 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 the cab of that truck. And it's Love just, that movie, just yes. you, you know, they're just looking at each other and you get it, you totally get mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, but, you know, looking on your IMDb page, it's the one movie. Mm -hmm. So how is that um, being relatively new, uh, new to doing films and, and, and doing it in this very non-verbal way? Um... I really enjoyed it, and I thought Aaron did a really good job uh, with with his directing skills. You know, he um, he would set things up. He would kind of give you a, a little bit of a frame of, of like what needed to happen, and then you kind of uh, I sort of blended you know some of my own experiences with um, with the dialogue that needed to come out. So like literally, I would be speaking about something real that happened to me and then by the end of the, c the scene or the sentence it was like back to the dialogue that needed to come out. And so, um, yeah, I, I did a lot of acting when I was younger. I went to a performance arts school and, you know, studied all the basics and off-Broadway teachers and that sort of thing. And, uh, and then I got out of it about f when I was about 15 because I realized I'm really not that good at theater. <laughs> you know, I did, a, I did a theater show once and I was played Madonna 
And so I walked out on the stage and I had the cone bra and everything, you know, and the ponytail sticking off the top of the head. And, and uh, I walked out and I just totally fumbled my lines, you know, and I'm like, oh my god. And you're all dressed up and yeah. looking really good and yeah. yeah, it just adds to the, well, in a bra with cones. Yeah, I think that's really all I cared about anyways, you know, I didn't have the line, the lines weren't that important, so I just kind of, you know, threw in a few like extra words and then I was like done. I had to pretty much announce the next act, so it was, it was quite interesting, it was quite embarrassing. <laughs> The, the documentary uh, portion of this film, I was um, amazed, I, I still can't quite believe it actually, that there would be uh, so many people that were out in such a small town where the community, you know, really looks down on that lifestyle and yet, you know, it's, it's a hotbed. Well, Iowa, luckily, you can still get, you can get married in Iowa as a gay couple. Oh, right. It was yes. right at that time, right? Mm -hmm. when when we were filming, there were people protesting on the street a little bit because they had just passed the law that you could marry as a gay couple. Um, but we found the, the people in, the, uh, in Muscatine, the small town where we filmed it, um, but also a little bit around. Just uh, Basically, everybody goes to the, a, a city which is 30 minutes driving mm -hmm. to the gay bar because that's... We have a Where very it is. small gay district. Yeah, so everybody comes especially for that, that, which is, for me, coming from Amsterdam, so strange. I just hop on my bike and I'm there in three yeah. minutes. Uh, so going by car to another city to go to a gay bar was very strange. Um, so and, and at the beginning, it was difficult to find people willing to talk. Um, or they would be joking, like, OK, yeah, you can film my feet so that nobody recognizes me. Um, but eventually, yeah, and, and, what, and we've interviewed more people than ended up being in the film, of course. Um, but what was most shocking to me uh, was that there were so many people who had, who had had a very difficult period uh, coming to terms with being gay and, and being out to the community. Um, like the, there, this one lady in the film saying that people she was working with said, I think you should not work here anymore. And then you think, wow, that's it's like it's from another century. And it was, of course, but <laughs> it was in the, uh, yeah. Well, they say about the, um, when you're doing the shocking scenes on a, on a set, you know, we watch it and we're shocked by it, but when you're filming um, shocking material, it's often kind of mundane and the mechanical process of just getting through it. But I can't imagine doing that rape scene could have been, you know, all fun and giggles. It was really, really intense. Yeah, it's it's intense, but we have in most of the heavy scenes we had a safe word, uh, so we could always stop it. And those scenes actually are a lot of fun to play because uh, you're kind of fighting your buff. And and we were good friends. John is the the actor. He's a really nice guy, and we had almost like a choreography that we knew where we were going to end up and. Uh, so it is, like you say, a mechanical thing, in a way. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's like here, here, and here, and end up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like fighting with your brother. Uh, and of course, you, you go into it, and, it's, uh, and I would be on the stairs of the set, walking there with my heart pounding in my throat, uh, knowing that I was going to do that scene. Um, and then we were done, and they were looking back at the material and seeing if we needed another take. And then John and I would be in the kitchen and be like, damn, right. <laughs> did you see me? <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course I was there. <laughs> but the, we, we had fun about it. It was nice. It was As nice. writers, though, uh, why did you and Aaron feel that this had to happen to the character? I mean, it was a really powerful scene, but I, I remember you know, during the credits roll, I was thinking to myself, you know, did the scene powerful as it was? Yeah, Did well, it, have to be there? it has something to do with what you said earlier that the uh, character Alexa shows very little of herself in normal le life and asks daring questions and like really questions from the heart in the documentary. And we wanted her to be a person in uh, normal life that sends out the wrong signals, that does not, uh, is not, she's not polite, she's not nice, she's actually quite annoying. And she's flirty in a way, but she's putting people on the wrong foot all the time. And um, 
that uh, that leads to misunderstandings and uh, because she uh, w we when we were writing it we had a lot of interviews with people uh, having to learn to love themselves and understanding themselves um, and we wanted that in Alexa as well that you see her from a perspective where she's not she's partying a lot she's not careful with herself she's just giving herself to people that she shouldn't or, or maybe if she thought twice then she would be nicer to herself uh, so we wanted her to come into a situation uh, that goes too far to realize okay and now it's enough and now I'm going to take care of myself and listen to what my heart says. Well changing tact uh, to a happier subject to finish on. They give me chills. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, opening night for the festival was last night, and uh, you were there and partying it up. And then uh, tonight you've got your screening and your Q and A. It must be just such a rewarding part of the process. Yeah, I'd have to say yes. Festivals are a lot of fun, right? They are. They are, and you meet so many interesting people from all over, and everybody's really nice. You know, just very, very hospitable, and you know. Good conversations, good, you know, just good people. I, I really like it. I'm kind of hooked. <laughs> hooked on festivals. The monster <laughs> has gotten in me. So you've got to go and make another one, then? I would love to, yeah, I would love to. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that Bumblefuck USA is the best film of the festival, at least the ones that I've seen. Absolutely loved it. So to get to talk to both of you uh, was a real treat. Thanks ever so much. It was really a treat appreciate for me your too. time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.